In this tutorial, we're gonna make a div, the full height of the screen. Okay, so I have a simple project here, a simple example, just an HTML boilerplate with one div in the HTML with a class of example. And I have selected this in my CSS and I have given it a background color. However, when I now refresh, I don't see this on the page yet because it, it doesn't really have any size. Right, it's a div element, so it's gonna be a block level element. Block level elements take up the entire width, right? But it has no height yet, right? So if I give it a height of let's say 50 pixels, we should see something, right? So now we do see 50 pixels of height, and so we do see something now. However, the first uh, strange thing that we see is it has some uh, space actually. Maybe I can zoom in a little bit. It has some space around it. It's not sitting against the edge of the viewport. There's actually uh, some space between there. And that's because the browser adds some default uh, margin and padding and some other default styling to, to um, elements. And one of those elements is actually the body element. It gets some default padding. So typically what people do is they, ha they have um, a certain reset in CSS. So typically what you want to do is you want to select all elements and you want to you want to remove some of the default styling so that styling becomes a little bit easier. So usually we want to remove all the default margin, all the padding, and usually we also want to set the box sizing property to border box. This is actually very advanced. Most developers don't really understand what's going on there. I have a video on this, check it out. But basically what this does is if you set a height or width of an element, that's gonna be the total width, including the padding and, 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 and a border size, right? So now when we do this, we don't have that weird space anymore, right? So it's good to get this out of the way because now we want it, we want, we, we want it to take up the entire height. Um, so let's talk about that. So the first you know, easy option is really to set it to 100% of the viewport height. So the viewport is the visible area of the web page. It does not include the address bar, right? It does not include this browser stuff. It's only this visible area. And we want it to be 100% of that visible area, right? So we'll, we could also say 50%. Right, so this is a different unit, it's called viewport height, right? So we could set it to 50% of the viewport, right? So it's gonna fill half, but we want it to be 100%, right? So now you have a full screen. And remember, the width is already determined uh, here because it's it's a block level element, right? A div is a block level element. So a block level element automatically takes up 100% of the width, right? But now we also have 100% of the viewport height as the height for this element. And so it's taking up everything here, right? So you can see CSS is actually pretty tricky and there are you know many concepts that you need to know as a front-end or full-stack developer. So it's really important that you master CSS. It only takes a couple of hours and it's going to be beneficial for your entire career. So definitely check out my professional CSS course if you want to take your CSS to an advanced level. You can find the link in the description. All right, now another solution that you'll sometimes see is people try to do this. They try to make the height 100%. Now when you do this, that doesn't work. Because what does it mean 100%? 100% of what exactly? Well, the default is that it's going to be 100% of its parent element. But the body itself does not have any size yet, right? So we're setting it to 100% of the body uh, height, but the body itself doesn't have any size yet. So what you can do is you can simply give the body a height of 100% of the viewport. Right, so then the body will be the entire height, and then we say, well, this, this element should then take up 100% of its parent element. Right, so then this also works, but it's a bit of a, you know, workaround, I guess. All right, now what you can also do these days is use Flexbox. You actually want to use Flexbox in many other uh, layout situations as well. So it's really important that you master Flexbox. Again, check out my course. So what you can do, uh, Flexbox is always about a parent element and its direct child elements. So here the body element, I would make this what we would call the Flex container. Basically just say display Flex. And that alone doesn't change anything except now we have unlocked the Flexbox functionalities. So what you can do is this is a flex item and you can determine how much space a flex item should take up. So if you use flex, this is actually a shorthand for other properties, but you can give it a proportion of the available space that it should take up, right? So if you have multiple flex items, you can give each of them a, propor a portion of the available space. Right. Here we only have one um, element, so if we give this some number here, it doesn't matter, any portion will, will do it, because this is the only one competing for the available space, so it's going to take up everything. Now, this alone won't work, because we also need to, uh, because the default direction of 
of flex box is row horizontal. So we want to we want the flex direction to be column, right? To be vertical, right? So now we're saying take up a hundred basically take up all the space um, vertically. So now it's going to take up all the available space in its parent element in the flex container, right? That's the body. So the body itself does need to be 100% of the, of, the, of the viewport, right? So we do still need uh, to make the body 100% of the viewport height. When you do that, we also get uh, the result that we want. Okay, now what if we have an extra element like a header? Right, so this is very common with many types of uh, layouts. So the header could have like 50 pixels of height, and then we want the other element to simply take up everything else. Right, so this is also one of the reasons why I want to show you how to do this with Flexbox, because Flexbox is going to be uh, the best solution in many of those uh, variations of this layout. So we could have a header. Typically it has like a, a, a fixed height, right, or it has some height. And I'll give it a background color of... Um, I'll give it a slightly lighter blue, right? So now we have this. Actually, this is already uh, working now because the, the the header gets 60 pixels of height, right? And then there is some available space left. And this is the only element competing for that available space, right? So even if you have a header now, this will take up everything else, right? So that's why this Flexbox solution is very nice because as you add other elements here, or like a footer as well, this element will still be... Um, taking up everything else even if we add a footer right very quickly footer i'll give it a background color of um, black and a height of 40 pixels right so now what happens is right we still have the flex container as the, as the parent element right and these are all flex items so this one the height of the flex container is 100 percent, so it takes up everything and then we have made it a flex container with a, with a vertical flow column. That's why they're all sitting like this, right? The default is actually, if we uncomment this, the default is a row, and so it's going to be messed up, right? So it does, it does need to be column. And now the header gets 60 pixels, the footer gets 40 pixels, and then we have some space left. And this is the only element competing for that available space. This is the only element that gets a portion assigned to it. And so it's simply going to take up everything. Could also be a different number. It doesn't matter because it's the only element. By the way, if this was helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. Also, check out my courses on CSS and JavaScript if you want to take those skills to an advanced level. Because in there, we will build some beautiful real-world projects from scratch so you can see how everything fits together and really master CSS or JavaScript. And I will also release other courses soon like React and Node.js. So if you want to be notified, then make sure you are subscribed to the email newsletter. You can find the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.